<laughs> okay, we're well, we live. We have a live <laughs> indicator here, and in case we are, good afternoon to everybody. Good morning to some people somewhere in the planet, and good something to everybody else. Um, it is 2.34 p.m. Uh, in my time zone, 4.34 um, in Eastern Time, and we just got a Nexus 5. Just out of the blue, just like that. We've been waiting for this phone for the longest time, and uh, yeah, Google just decided to make the phone public today uh, without letting anybody, you know, no events, nothing official. We were kind of expecting this for tomorrow. Uh, so everything that's happening now, we kind of had planned for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, Google just decided to spoil my lunch. So in order of appearance, we have a great team here to talk about our thoughts of what just went on. We're going to cover the news, and then we're going to go through what we think of everything. So uh, in order, Mr. Taylor Martin, hello to you, sir. How are you? Hello, I'm great, and I've got a pumpkin here just for the, the <laughs> Halloween festivities. That pumpkin so. kind of reminds kind of reminds me of somebody, but I can't say until like about a month from now. Probably Michael understands what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> I certainly don't. I'm, I'm pretending. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Joe Levi, who does not have a pumpkin, and I'm trying to figure out where you are, Joe. I am on location in the parking lot at my day job, but, you know, I love Pocket Now and I love my Nexus, so I'm here. You're a trooper, Joe. Thank you very much. <laughs> Joe, you got a good hairstyle going on today. I'm really liking what's going on there. You got like some altitude with that uh, quaff. Yeah, this is my uh, 7 a.m. podcast hair. Oh. <laughs> I think that's his Michael Fisher look. That's kind of familiar. I don't know why. Careful, it's trademarked. Better. Yeah, reminds me of George Michael, huh? Oh. And then Mr. Michael Fisher, how are you? Hi, mate. I am well. I, I feel like we. I was just broadcasting from this very booth a second ago. We were at the Pocket Now Weekly this morning. Joe Levi and Taylor Martin and Anton Dinoj and I talking about the Nexus 5. Shirtless I, Taylor we're, Martin. Shirtless Taylor Martin. We were watching the Whoa. come in on, on the Twitter feed, and I was like, uh, there's no way. There's no. We're just going to have another day where it's not happening, and then it happened. I feel constrained to point out before we move on to the last person to introduce. Uh, Jaime mentioned that we Google... Gave us a Nexus 5 was, I think, the phrasing. That is not correct. We do not have a Nexus 5 yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Google gave the world a Nexus yeah. 5. So if you're expecting to see one on this show, you should not be expecting to see one on this show. <laughs> yeah. Except for wait. I don't know. Oh, come just on. Kidding. Oh, just kidding. Oh, just kidding. That's just low don't class. Kill me. <laughs> I was expecting have, you to miss out. Stephen Shea, how are you? <laughs> hi, hi. See, I was half expecting Kello to pull out like a piece of cardstock he had just printed the official <laughs> press render on. <laughs> or like glued on to, I don't know, an iPhone 3GS or something. But I am well. I am well. Isn't that right. funny how, like, just, just literally, like, two hours ago, if one of us even had one of the in-store dummy, like, units, like, that would have been huge news. Like, we, yeah. would, we would have yeah. gone crazy over That's that. That's the past now, well, man. Somebody, somebody, now published, somebody published the video over lunch of the phone, and they were just playing around with the phone, and I was, I was trying to understand why the video got so many dislikes, and as it turns out, I started reading the comments, and everybody's like, the phone's already live, buddy. They already announced it. What are you trying to leave? <laughs> oh, oh, sad. Are you paying YouTube upload times? Yeah. Okay, so two disclaimers. Number one, um, Google has just totally destroyed us with this new Hangout interface. Um, everything looks weird. Um, and if we look weird or if we haven't figured something out or, you know, sorry about this, guys. We're trying to figure this out just as much as I'm sure a lot of people at Google are. And number two, my connection is terrible. This is the third time we've tried this. Um, so in case I drop off for any reason, the rest of the team will continue covering, and I will try to hop on like I always do. So anyways, without further ado, and I know certain people hate that phrase, let's start talking about this. We have a little bit of a, a schedule of amount of things that we want to discuss, so we'd like to start with Stephen. Um, we'd like to discuss the Nexus 5. What have you learned about this phone? What what can we, well, what can we expect? No, because a lot of, the, hey, the 16 gig model is already sold out, so tell us about it. Yeah, uh, luckily, uh, we heard a lot about this phone, you know, coming up to the actual launch, so we knew pretty much what to expect, and I don't think there have been any big surprises. The specs have largely been exactly what we were looking at, you know, the Snapdragon 800, the uh, 1080p uh, nearly 5-inch uh, display, and like you said, the 16, and there's also a 32 gigabyte model. Now, it does look like the availability is a little better than it was with the Nexus 4. And while there have been, you know, we saw the, the 16 gigabyte model drop out 
Google is showing it's not available anymore. It did come back, and I think now it's gone again. This is for just the US. Um, but it seems to be holding out better than you know, the Nexus 4. It didn't disappear instantly. And last I checked, the 32 gigabyte model is still available and shipping November 8. So if you want to order one still, you can have it within just a little over a week. I think that they're completely sold out now. By now? OK. Probably. In the half it's hour like since I last checked. Yeah, but keep, <laughs> it does keep coming. Once they're out, they have been coming back. So keep checking if you really, really want one. Also, like we saw last year, remember with the Nexus 4 when it was sold out, if you kept hammering away on it, sooner or later, sometimes you got the opportunity to buy one. So do okay. keep trying if you want one. Black and white are still available by November 8th, and 32 gig white 16 is, is done. Okay, so you have some no, just, options there. Just a little note there. When I got mine in, I was told that it would ship by November 5th. So this is the uh, second batch, theoretically, that's going out on the 8th. And I presume we'll see those batches continue to go forward. So keep an eye on the dates, the uh, the ship-by dates. Now, we'll be doing uh, an update on the actual specs. We're going to do a rundown later on today showing you the phone versus all the other flagships. I just want to quickly mention about the G2, since that's what the Nexus 5 is based on. It's very similar to the G2, but there's a few little differences. Um, Nexus 5 has a smaller battery, only 2,300 milliamp hours. Uh, Google says you can get, I think, eight hours of web browsing on it or 17 hours of talk time, I believe, was the, uh, the figure. So and hopefully, something like 60 hours of straight video music playback. It's something crazy like, like that. Like 300 hours standby. So maybe they'll be able to pull it off even with a smaller battery. That does let the phone slim down a little. Um, it's about half a millimeter thinner than the G2. And it's also a little bit lighter, I think 13 grams lighter. But wow, also the front-facing camera got a little bit of a downgrade compared it's to It's thinner G2. than this. You're kidding. That's what they say. But wow. You won't be able to notice it. It's so tiny. And it's 130 grams, which is exactly as massive as the Galaxy S4 was, right? But uh, then there's that the difference in material around back, which is interesting, where it's, where it's like, oh, this is a, as light as the S4, but it's probably going to feel a bit better in the hand thanks to the soft touch versus the glossy stuff. I feel like a Nexus 7. Yeah. And, and you think that soft touch is going to be, you know, for those of you that ordered the black model, Michael, do you think that's going to be a fingerprint magnet, you know, this, a smudge magnet? Would you recommend the white model better? Well, I, I'll tell you what. I've got a white one coming to me, and I know we're going to see a black one. So I, I think we're going to have to see. I am more interested in knowing whether the material changes in the tactile, you know, responsiveness. Not That's not what I mean. I, I want to see if the material feels different between the black one and the white one. Because like that's this. What from the Note 3. Exactly, Taylor. Yeah, it's exactly. I, I, I had reviewed the Black Note 3. It felt great. This one feels meh. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I like the black one a lot better, trust me. <laughs> yeah, but, okay. same thing with this. And but, if you don't anyways, like those colors, there's a number of different case options. There's a red and a yellow official bumper. There's also a black and gray bumper and white and black uh, cases with a little folder to cover the front as well. Stephen, do you I was, know? I was, was, was going to ask you: Is that folder uh, mag, mag, has? Does it have a magnetic latch to turn the display on and off, or is it a typical? Just... I was wondering about that. Uh, I, I haven't seen anything mentioned about that, and I couldn't tell just by looking. But it seems like the sort of feature we would expect. So I don't know just yet. Do you know so the, the mechanics of it, I don't know, but it is an active cover. Cover, so when you open it, it will skip the swipe to unlock. It'll okay. automatically turn on and off. Whether that's by proximity or by uh, a magnetic mm -hmm. clasp, they didn't say. And there's no window this time, like we see on the you know the Note or with the G2. It's just a little cutout for the speaker. Does no. the cover do anything to affect the Qi wireless charging uh, ability of the Nexus 5? Do we know that? It says that it's officially compatible with the uh, the Nexus wireless charger. They're just calling it the Nexus wireless charger at this point. But it so, is compatible. I mean, I, I know the new one. The device itself is. I just wonder if the cases affect that. I'm, yes. I'm, uh, the, the, the case... One of the line items they said on both the bumpers and the flip cases is that they are still compatible with key, or key, Very good. key wireless charging. Cool, cool, cool. Good. Now, now for those interested in buying, uh, Stephen, we remain in the same policy, right? It's only available on the Google Play Store. Uh, no carriers have picked it up just yet, and you can just get it for the same 350 or 400, right? I know T-Mobile mentioned they're definitely going to have it in stores. I don't think they give a date. Um, but there's a lot better band support this time around. Um, and we saw CDMA support, not WCDMA for 3G, but CDMA like Verizon and Sprint, which is weird because we're not used to seeing 
those sort of phones sold separately from the carrier. So I'm still waiting to find out exactly how sales of those are going to work, but this looks like we're going to have a universal model that's going to work everywhere uh, the, in the U.S. With the exception uh, of Verizon, it is not, it is not for Verizon. Confirmed? Okay. Yeah. 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 But yeah okay, so more information on that. CDMA bands for Sprint and I think nine LTE bands total. Yeah. Uh, Joe, you wanted to say something? Yeah, so looking at the release notes, uh, we're going to have the stock version, just like we have the Nexus 4, available through the Play Store. Uh, they went on to specifically say that the uh, there are going to be additional uh, places uh, for resale coming this holiday season or, or before the holidays, I think is the wording that they used. And they listed places like Best Buy and Sprint as a separate item. So I assume that we're going to be getting a separate... Nexus 5 that has the separate uh, a separate version of the uh, Snapdragon 800 chip like we talked about in the weekly uh, this morning uh, that carries the CDMA stuff that you'll get in the Sprint stores. So it's not 100% confirmed, but that's how I'd assume based on the way it was presented. Unfortunately, it's not going to be like one universal device. But the, the, listing, my... the listing in the Play Store now does say it has that CDMA band on it. <sighs> That, that's weird. I don't know. Yeah. I could and, be wrong. And, you know, it wouldn't be like the first time that it's done. Obviously, the iPhone 4S wasn't an LTE-capable phone, but it did. It was one universal unit for CDMA and HSPA+. Plus. It was one thing um, where it changed in the iPhone 5, obviously because of how complicated LTE is. So, yeah, we, we most probably will be getting a separate unit, which I hope not. I hope that it's one universal phone and that people will be able to swap around their networks as much as they can, because just think about it. I mean, you right now have to pay $300 on contract to get a Note 3 with the Snapdragon 800 processor and most of the specifications that you get on this Nexus 5, and for $50 more, or $100 more, you can get a Nexus 5 off contract. This is crazy. This is just crazy. I mean, it's this beautiful. is beautiful. Like it's, it's a no-brainer. I mean, these people, Google is really, like, they've tried to disrupt the market for so long, but this is, like, the best way. You can't disrupt the market with a, with a low-end or mid-tiered phone. You can do it even if it's priced right. You can do it with a top-of-the-line, high-end phone, so much so that the phone is already sold out. Well, the Nexus 4 sold out just, just as quickly, if not faster. But, yeah, it, I mean, it's, faster. But it, it's a different beast because last year Google wasn't trying to create the most impressive and highly specced phone. It was trying to prove that you don't need great specifications to have a great phone. True. And I think they got the message across very well, and uh, so has Motorola and a lot of others, but that doesn't mean that you don't need or maybe want high-end specifications, and now Google's catering to that as well. So. Until you took the first photograph. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. yeah, the <laughs> Nexus 4, the Moto X are two examples of terrible cameras, and uh, well... The Nexus 5 is supposed to have a better camera, but... Uh, yeah, reports... About some, one thing we, yeah. we shouldn't gloss over that, because this, this camera does take a step down in resolution, but as I mentioned in a piece I just published an hour ago... It has I was about to ask good. you, Michael, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the fact that it, that it has OIS is great, because OIS is kind of the new buzzword of the new year, and uh, or the year that's about to close out, and it's it, it, in, in contrast to the resolution war, it deserves to be there. Like, OIS brings real advantages, and it can, as we've seen with the HTC One, it can even take a really low-end, uh, low-resolution camera and make it do, allow it to do wonderful things. So I think Just this may well be the first... <laughs> right. I think this may well be the first uh, Nexus we see that delivers uh, a pretty good camera experience. We'll have to see, you know, in concert with the HDR Plus stuff and all the stuff that, the software stuff that Google has packaged in there. No, and I think, like, for example, both uh, Taylor, uh, you, Michael, and myself, we, all three of us had a, G, a G2. Yeah. And we universally agreed that that was the Android camera to beat. It was. Well, you really? I didn't have much experience with it. Oh, yeah, because Taylor's was busted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, no, that's a good point, Jaime, and that's, that's actually really directly related to what we're talking about here because the Nexus 5, you know, is, as we've said, is kind of the G2 Nexusified, and... Like, besides the resolution duck there, I think we're going to see some pretty impressive stuff from, from this sensor. There was some speculation. I think Brian uh, Klug at Anantak was speculating that it might be a, a Sony sensor uh, based on the specifications that have been published. And if so, it would be very interesting to see uh, uh, that Sony sensor made into OIS. So. Yeah, we heard that earlier. We were talking about that confusion over a MEMS component. 
But the, the yeah. one point that stuck was Sony sensor. Right. Well, yeah. the, the iPhone 5S has a Sony sensor, and uh, so far it doesn't have OIS, and it pulls some very amazing low-light photos. So yeah. I, I think we should expect something good. I mean, if we get the same or probably same uh, sensor matched with OIS, this should be like probably the camera to beat as well. We will see. I, I think at this point it, it would just be it would just behoove Google to shoot par. You know, it's like it, it, if they can deliver a good shooting experience on a Nexus, that's that's fine for this year. That's all they need to do. <laughs> Decent, <laughs> passable. Um, yeah, I've seen some sample photos from people at Google, and uh, some of them aren't so great. So I'm not I'm not gonna you know, throw them one throw all the eggs in that one basket. I'm probably going to buy a Nexus Five, but uh, I think the phone for me is uh, as much as I love stock. I think that's the phone for me. Um, yeah. So, no, yeah. well, anyways, any any more any other points to discuss about the Nexus Five, Stephen? Anything else that we've forgotten to cover? Um, no, I think we we've seen or we've covered a lot, everything that uh, we've wanted to so far. The only question I've still had in my mind is what this uh, new wireless charger is going to sell for. Um, but other than that, it, the stuff is out there. The hardware is going to be arriving in just a week or so. We're going to finally get our a lot of hands-on reports from users. Letting us know what they think about the photo, what they think about battery life, and finally be able to get a you know full assessment of what the Nexus Five is going to mean. Yeah, don't okay. expect a cheap price on those accessories, though, because no, Google no. always jacks up their prices on accessories because the hardware sold so cheap. Yeah. Um, like like the case for the Nexus is what forty bucks. Uh, yeah, the Nexus bumper 7? case and the flip cover is sixty, I believe. Well, the, the Nexus 7 case, I mean, it's not oh, cheap. I'm, I'm talking uh, Nexus 5 stuff. The, but, they're coming soon, but they're spendy. Yeah, and the uh, the wireless charger for the Nexus 4 was 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, stuff's not going to be cheap, but, you know, more than makes up for it having a phone that just costs a fraction but, of the cost of another phone. So. At least with the compatibility, you can always pick up a cheap, you know, Nokia charger for, like, 25 bucks, and it'll work. No, 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 no. Don't do that. No, don't, don't do that. Do that. <laughs> don't do that. If anybody wants my Nokia charger, I would gladly sell it to them. So there's I a don't reason they're so cheap. Well, there's uh, yeah. the, the Tilt. Tilt also has that wonderful line of, of view uh, chargers. There's a lot of cheap compliant stuff out there that's actually really good. So like your yeah, face. I, everything else that I've used that's cheap compliant is great. Just the Nokia one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, sorry, I had to say that, Michael. Just to follow, just to follow up um, with, with the schedule that we have here, um, how about if we run things down comparing the Nexus Five against the Nexus Four, Taylor? I mean, you had the Nexus Four; it was probably your favorite phone. Um, Joe had the Nexus Four. Stephen has a Nexus Four. Um, yeah, Joe, kill me with that back thing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Now, yeah. now, it's us, mahogany. Taylor. For, for those of you that have a Nexus 4 right now, is it worth the upgrade, Taylor? Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that's a pretty much, it's pretty much a no-brainer. I mean, if you're happy with your Nexus 4, then fine, don't buy it, no. But if, uh, if you're not and you're thinking it's feeling a little dated, because a lot of people felt the Nexus 4 was a little underpowered when it came out, at least in comparison to um, other high-end phones, and, uh, you know, this, this is a major upgrade. This isn't like iPhone 5 to iPhone 5S or Galaxy S3 to Galaxy S4. This is this is big. You know, it's it's a leap uh, because Google went from kind of I'm getting a call on my computer, uh, but it, <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that anyway. But um, we're going from something that's kind of you know a moderate spec phone to something that is in line with all of the highest in specs that you can get on anything. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely a a big upgrade, and, and it's definitely worth the price because you could probably offload your, your Nexus 4 for maybe half the price of a Nexus 5. Yeah. I, I was just so, looking on Craigslist to figure out what I could get for mine if I wanted to sell it. <laughs> I sold mine a few weeks ago, and I'm sure that, that didn't make smart. Brandon... It probably didn't make Brandon too happy because he's like, hey, we're, we're going to get you to compare the Nexus 4 and Nexus 5, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <You're not. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You know, and I think this, uh, for me particularly, this brings us back to the time of the Nexus One. When the Nexus One was announced, it was the first one gigahertz processor. Uh, it was—I'm trying to remember what, how many firsts this phone. It was the first yeah. Snapdragon. 
It was the first Snapdragon Ooh. processor in the market. Um, I remember this phone being so... Th- it was the thinnest Android smartphone of the day. That light-up was- trackball. What? Ooh, I love that thing. Yes, bring Beautiful. it back, Google. <laughs> yeah, and you know, this is this is we are finally back to that. The Nexus S was not a big leap compared to the phones that were out there. Uh, the the Galaxy Nexus wasn't a big leap. It didn't innovate. There were already 720p displays in the market. The Nexus 4 was, we could say, a little bit of a step back to what was already in the market by the fall of last year. And now when we see the Nexus 5, this is just a no-brainer. This is really a no-brainer. I, you know, unless you want to shell out more money for a non-contract uh, you know, deal or something, there's really no reason to not buy this phone. Meaning it's probably one of the most attractive devices in the market. In the- uh, I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. Why not? Why not? Listen, listen I've been over here. I've, I've, been, I've been sitting quietly listening to this. Listen, I, I'm not saying it's an ugly device, okay? Uh, we talked a little about this in the podcast this morning. It's not an ugly device. But it also does nothing to stand out. And yeah. the argument in favor of that is, well, let it get out of the way of the software. The story's about the software. It's a Nexus device. Fine. Hey, I don't hey like that. that sounds like what I said. Yeah, well, no, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't like that story. I mean, it, it should be a unified experience, and the hardware should lend something to that. And of course, you get that in terms of the internals. You get the Snapdragon 800, you get the OIS and the camera that I like. But if you look at the casing, and you know, we'll get one in the office, and we'll either confirm this, or I'll be like, I was wrong. It, it almost looks like reference hardware. I yeah. mean, there's nothing really special about it. You know, it's it kind of reminds me of the Z10 a little bit, where it's like, oh, I mean, yeah, this is fine, I guess. You, you know, know I mean, the, the, the Nexus I, 4 was super fragile. You had to have <laughs> kid gloves on the whole time, but it was pretty. Yeah, right, exactly. At least the Nexus 4 said something. And as I said on the podcast this morning, the Nexus S even, the like reviled Nexus that nobody wants to remember is like, at least that was doing something cool with a curved glass over the screen with a little bulb on the bottom. Like, at least it was different. And this Nexus 5, the, the Nexus 5 is just kind of like, hey, look, I'm here, and yeah, I'm hardware. It's okay. Look at the software. Like, that's what it's now, doing. Now, t- now tell me something, Michael. Tell me something. So if you if you had the choice, and I mean I mean let's disconnect ourselves from our pocket now roles, yeah. and let's see ourselves as the average person out there. If they gave you the option to buy, okay, how many phones do we have right now that are Snapdragon 800 powered, and that have most of the specifications that the Nexus 5 has? All we have are the Galaxy Note 3, the LG G2. What else? The S4 has a variant with the 800. But you can't get it in the United States. So let's sure. talk United States right now. All you have is the G2 and the Galaxy Note 3. And now you have the Nexus 5. Uh-huh. So if we were to compare, you know, getting these two phones on contract, $200 for one, $300 for the other, or pay an extra $50 to get this whole package off contract, do you think that that won't make you consider it? You know, do you think that that's if, not big enough? If if we're confining ourselves to this world in which the Snapdragon 800 is some kind of like boundary that we give a shit about, you know, crap about, you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> because I, I don't necessarily like. Remember, Jaime, I carry the Moto X more often than I carry any other smartphone, and this has been like you know on the spec sheet, people are like, whatever, I don't know how to make of this because they made something custom, and it's like, oh, it's not high spec. No, f off. Like I don't care about that. <laughs> You know? Can I, I can't be the only one that likes this hardware, though. I can't be the only one that likes the Nexus 7. I like the Nexus 7. I, I love it. I love the hardware. I love the design. Like, it's you know, Nexus 7. Like, Michael doesn't I, like the design of the Nexus 5, but I actually do. I find it simplistic. Michael I mean, doesn't I like it because it's I find not it hipster enough. As well. I'm not, I would never argue that I don't find it simplistic. <laughs> I just can't get around the giant camera screen. thing. <laughs> you don't like the giant yeah, camera? Yeah, that I don't. And I don't, I don't like know how about that. In the that, case, but... they kept the cutout just as big. Why not just shrink it down to the size of the lens? Because what are you because to the lens the lens is conveying a message. It's saying yeah. the same thing. And twenty is saying it's saying, look, this camera it's is a big I'm ugly. ugly. <laughs> it might yeah, be saying I'm listen, ugly. It depends on depends on your hearing, I suppose. Listen, I, I think that that bulge was is there simply because fitting the OIS in that casing was too difficult. Apple did it with the iPod Touch. The, they, they made it so thin that they couldn't fit the lens in there, and so it has this hump on top of it to fit the lens. And I feel that that's the reason why they did it with the Nexus 5. That could well be, yeah. And nice especially guess. if the Nexus 5 is thinner than the G2, because the G2, they managed to fit OIS in there and kept exactly. the lines, but if it's thinner, exactly. then yeah. 
That makes but, sense. And it's mainly because of the curve in the it's mainly because of the curve in the chassis. Because right. of that bump, that's what allows for OIS, for OIS to fit there. But right. over, overall, you know, I, I guess we have mixed feelings. Some of us like the phone, some of us don't like the phone. I personally, you know, this is like uh, I do. I do like the phone. For me, it's like why not? At that price, why not? Yeah, I'm, see, I'm uh, I'm probably going to buy one either way. But <laughs> probably. I mean, it doesn't probably. matter. I'm on the fence too. Yeah, I'm going to buy one, but it's probably going to sit more than anything. I mean, that's kind of how my Nexus 4 was. I bought it because it was so cheap, and then I would pop my SIM card in it when I got tired of touchless or something else. Inexpensive, not cheap. <laughs> uh, cheap. So, so that's cheap. value. Yeah, no, and you're cheap, okay. <laughs> it's we a high-value, talk... low-cost phone. Okay. When we all talk about ourselves and, and we, we're using many devices, we're a very different different set. But, like, time, I, I get your point. Inexpensive is, is a powerful motivator, particularly when you're talking about specs like this. The Nexus 5 is not a bad device, and I don't dislike it. I don't want to convey that impression. But uh, I, it's just interesting because the Nexus, this is, we're no longer in the same world as we were, um, where you can, you can now get the stock Google experience on a Moto X, on a Play Edition S4, on an HTC One. You know, it, it's more expensive, yes, but you can do it. A Nexus, a Nexus device is not your only route to stock Android. So I think that's interesting. Uh, you know, and, and, and we're going to discuss the, the competition in a little so, bit. But go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Yep. So let me jump in and answer the question um, that you asked long ago there, if I'm not a robot. Um, I went from a, uh, a Galaxy Nexus, which I thought was a really, really good device, and I bought the Nexus 4. And honestly, I could have done without that upgrade because there's not a lot of difference between the two. Uh, they're both solid devices. Uh, now, going from that again, from the Nexus 4 up to the next one, the Nexus 5, having not held it in hand, but just looking at the raw specs, that's a huge jump. We're talking about what would have been a two-year jump before in, in this one-year jump from the 4 to the 5. Part of that is because the 4, I feel, was under spec It was lower than what it could have been and, and lower than what it should have been, but it, it is what it is. The 5, the 5 is the latest and greatest hardware. It's the best that you can get. So if, you're, if you've got a 4, a 5 is definitely going to be worth it for you. It was worth it for me. I, I went yeah. out, spent the money, and... Ironically, I'm getting the white one too, Michael. So it's on its way in the first batch. So and I was I was actually going to segue towards you, Joe, uh, in our topic list mainly because of two things. Number one, you know, and I'm just going to set it out there. I even tweeted this like about a week ago, where you know the Snapdragon 800 has been so big for me. It's like the Haswell processor on laptops. It is just so power efficient and just so powerful on its own that it it dares me to actually recommend the phone that is rocking it, even if I haven't tested it, just because of how reliable <laughs> it's been for me on the G2 and on the Note 3. That's my thought. I mean, just because it has that processor, I'm like, okay, just because of that, I'd buy the phone. But, you know, sp you know, aside from processing power, we also have to talk about Android 4.4. So how do you feel about these two things, Joe? You know, obviously the spec bump. Plus, what can we learn from 4.4? What can you tell us? Okay, so the, the spec bump is important, but not as important as it may be. It's important for the Nexus 5, but not as important for Android 4.4 KitKat. Uh, so first of all, we've talked about the Moto X a little bit, so let's segue right into that. A lot of people have been wondering, are we going to get the same kind of ambient listening stuff that we have with the Moto X in the Nexus 5 and with Android 4.4? And the answer is sort of. If you are on your home screen, you can now say, OK, Google, and tell it to do something. Play music, navigate to somewhere, uh, do a search, whatever. You can do that now from the launcher itself. You don't have to launch Google now and then go into that. It doesn't sound like it's going to be ambient as it is with the Moto X, so we're not going to quite get that. And that makes sense because we don't have the dedicated processor like we do in the Moto X with the, uh, the Nexus 4. But it opens the question... Might we have that with other devices down the road with with KitKat? And that question is, is unknown. Um, going back to where we were, uh, it's going to be faster, not just because of the hardware. <laughs> Making fun of Steven there. But because <laughs> uh, it, 
they've gone through, Google's gone through and made a lot of optimizations to memory usage, uh, not just in the operating system, but in the core apps. So everything is going to be quite a bit faster. Multitasking is faster. It's got a lighter footprint. So what that means is you're not going to need the latest and greatest hardware to be able to run this OS. It should run on older hardware every bit as good as the current versions of Android do on those hardware and even better on up-level versions like what we have sporting the uh, the 800 processor and whatnot in there and, and other uh, high-end processors and other devices when we eventually see those running, uh, running KitKat. Someone is saying you can say, okay, Google, when the screen is off. I don't think that's true. Now, I know the Snapdragon 800 does support uh, the ambient processing sort of capabilities where you can do that kind of stuff, but... Uh, and as I say that, Joe drops off. <laughs> yeah, so timely, man. <laughs> the next time Joe, uh, the next time Joe says that T-Mobile 3G does him just fine, he doesn't need LTE. Let's all remind him of this moment, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think that well, four four point four is just a minor a minor point upgrade. Joe just joined us again, Joe. Uh, we, we made fun of you as you were. T-Mobile HSPA plus, buddy. T-Mobile HSPA plus, man. What are you talking about? I'm Wi-Fi to the building uh, oh. down the street. So. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, damn. All right. All right. <laughs> it's either that or LTE on yeah. my Nexus 4, right? So, yeah. All right. Uh, so telling so the last that. I heard was somebody saying that you can say, okay, Google, when the screen is off. I haven't heard that either. Um, everything that I've seen has just been on the, uh, the home screen, on one of your home screens, you can say that. That's what um, I think I read on Google's description of it. Uh, yeah. Their and, little and, blog post. Here is what I got from them. Uh, quote, you don't need to touch the screen to get things done. When you're, home screen, or when you're on your home screen or in Google Now, just say, okay, Google, to launch, voice search, send a text, get directions, or even play a song. There's an asterisk over, over that, uh, which says currently only available on the Nexus 5. So um, that doesn't sound cool, but we'll see how they, how they do to integrate that. Any more questions there, or do you want to go on to other cool stuff? What else do we get from KitKat? What other enhancements? Okay, so core apps. They've done a lot in the core apps. One of the main things they've done is making the whole communication suite uh, a lot more integrated, better, more intelligent. So in your, uh, let's start out with a, a really cool thing. You now have integrated caller ID with your dialer. So if you get a call from somebody that's not in your address book, it's going to try and figure out who is calling you so it can show you that caller ID. Uh, most of that seems like it's just business stuff rather than personal, but it'll be interesting to see how they do that. Not only uh, that, but you can you can enter the contacts app, and if you don't have a, a, a number entered, you, it'll like, you can do reverse lookup as well, right? And you can do, you can yeah. just start, like type in pizza into your contacts app, and it'll find a local pizza. Like, that's awesome. I love yeah, that's, that is that's the other side of that. So the outgoing stuff when you're making a call, uh, it's going to automatically prioritize your contacts based on the people that are most important to you, but it's also going to search for nearby businesses uh, and even people in your Google Apps domain. So if your company, your school, uh, whoever it is, like Pocket Now, we use a Google Apps domain, it will search for people in that now as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's doing a lot to make that contacting people a lot nicer and smoother. Uh, next, we've got the big Hangouts Google Voice integration that it, we thought was coming a long time ago. Is it Google Voice integration? I thought it was just yes, uh, the stock SMS. I didn't see anything about Google Voice, because if it's Google Voice, that means I'm incredibly excited. If yeah, not, then I'm worried, worried if it's Voice. Hang out it's, it's, voice. It's, it's I, stock I thought it was. No, it's, it's just stock SMS, unfortunately. It's stock SMS. Is it? Yeah, it doesn't oh, have Google. Man. Now, <laughs> now that, that paired with... But then I the read that, that one. Can, they worded that trickily. <laughs> but you can, you can sync your Google Voice to your Messages app, so can you still do that with the Hangouts update? You should be able to. I would believe. And I'm going to have to double check my other source because the one that I'm reading right now uh, confirms what you're saying, but the one that I was reading before implied that this is the same type of uh, update like we saw on iOS, so I've got to go back and confirm that. Uh, I will have an article up on this later today, hopefully within the next hour or so, so uh, we'll have all of the information there if any of this is incorrect. But you now even can send animated GIFs. They included that as a feature. So I'm that feature that you own. And emoji. Wanted. Don't forget the emoji. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. And uh, 
the last, but certainly not the least, uh, power feature, if, if you will, is being able to print whenever you want, wherever you want. This is a feature uh, that employs Google Cloud Print, which is something we've been able to do through an app in the Play Store, but now it's built into the core OS. So all kinds of neat. Uh, the main thing, the main take Raise, home, raise yeah. your Let's hand see. if you have a printer, everybody. No! <laughs> <laughs> we don't! Functional or just... Wait, like, I was gonna you know what I do if I need printer. to print something? Oh Kinkos. Are we like, are we yeah. he now? Like, what's going on? I don't, who cares? <laughs> but, print on a dead... But that, that's, that's just it, Taylor. If This will let you print to wherever you need to. So if you need to print that hotel reservation or need to print that ticket or need to print... You know, a map for somebody, and you're at Kinko's, or you're at someplace else that has a, uh, a Google Cloud connected printer, like those places will. You can send that information directly over there and, and get an old fashioned cut down the trees version so, of that information. So Michael if we is, do Michael's that killing me over there. <laughs> it's most likely not Google Cloud connected either. It's all no. It's totally worthwhile. Like everything Joe is saying is absolutely useful. I just can't stop laughing whenever somebody talks about printing as a feature. Like it's just it's hilarious. <laughs> it's like yes. putting a diesel <laughs> engine on a horse drawn carriage. Like. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> No drive Why not? Just the, just, just the engine Why sitting not, there. Right? Wrong decade, <laughs> Wrong decade. <laughs> making voice calls a big feature. Mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. So you ultimately, go. The, the big take-home behind, uh, behind KitKat, behind the 4.4 version of this, is the, the new launcher, it's the, the new streamlined apps, and making them all very, very lightweight so that it's going to be able to run on a lot of the not only current hardware, Nexus 5 notwithstanding, but the stuff that you have in your pocket today, but also the older stuff and the, the kind of lower end stuff. I think they're doing this kind of to combat the whole Android is laggy thing that people are complaining about with the, the lower end devices, uh, and I think it's probably a really good way to do it. Yeah, but I think it's very optimistic of Google putting this 512 megabyte support in now. I think the manufacturers yeah. who released a lot of phones with that much RAM have moved on and aren't issuing updates anymore. Yeah, uh, that's probably so. Yes, but this is a question that I have, Joe. I mean, I, we we have a report from from The Verge that says that e e Google is not going to be upgrading the Galaxy Nexus to Android 4.4. Why? Yeah, why the are full of that, by the way. I don't understand why that would be. I mean, it, it, it could clearly, if they're making an OS that can run on lower spec yeah, hardware, even, even the Nexus One can run this. Yeah. So basically. And I'm glad you brought this up because the irony is thick. Yeah. Uh, Google has a habit of upgrading the one down version of uh, of their devices. So the Nexus 4, they've already committed to. We're going to see uh, Android 4.4 on the Nexus 4, quote, in the coming weeks. So whether that's two weeks, four weeks, a month and a half, I don't know. But we'll see it. The next version down, we won't. Not officially. And that's the same thing they did last time. But the point you're making is they are making this version of Android specifically capable of running on very, very relatively low-end hardware. So you'd think that they would break that rule and go ahead and publish it. And I, I like what Jaime was saying. Go down and do it on the Nexus S just to show that it can be done. For all 12 people who still have a Nexus S, show them you can do it, and it runs great. Wait, but, all 12 people who have a Nexus S whose devices weren't bricked by a Google update. <laughs> Which, if they weren't, half of them probably would be by with this one. But, so we found half a dozen. This is, this is just an irony. I mean, even the, the Nexus one that was left behind with gingerbread, even that phone can run this. Yeah. Uh, according to what they say, it should be able to. And it was designed specifically to be able to do that. Now, just, but just they're the, not. As, uh, as my favorite driver in, in Grand Theft Auto V says, this don't make no effing sense. <laughs> yeah, and Joe, to finish up with Android 4.4, probably the biggest rumor, I guess, didn't happen then. So you can't. The Android launcher is not made available for everyone, I guess. Not yet, at least. Did, had, have they said it's not going to happen? Yeah, they specifically mention. Well, they specifically mention the launcher by name. They're calling it what the Nexus launcher. I forget what it is, but I can uh, note that. That's the first time I think I've ever seen them note the name of the launcher. It's always just been part of Android. So I think they're setting themselves up to be able to do that, but 
As of right now, no, it's not. And I wouldn't do it if I were them because I'd want people to go out and buy my latest hardware before I release stuff that makes old hardware look like my new hardware. Well, they're sold out, so they can do it now. All right. What? Oh, okay. Well, then go ahead and do that. It's in the Play Store. <laughs> okay, so that would be Android 4.4. I guess the, the takeaway that we've got left here is uh, compared to... So we have our resident number one reviewer who's pretty much reviewed absolutely everything that's gone through our Pocket Now Labs, Mr. Michael Fisher. <laughs> He's reviewed everything ever. Yeah, everything ever. ever. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, so you've, you've pretty much reviewed everything out there, Michael. How do you see this phone stack up? We go back to the conversation of your thoughts on the design and how does it stack up to everything else out there? If there's one thing I've learned, it's that not a lot of the people in the populace, and the general populace outside of geek circles, care all that much about uh, hardware aesthetics, which is why we have this landscape of very, very similar looking hardware. So the Nexus 5 is not going to have any trouble because of that. I mean, it's, n it's, it's not. And Google has never really positioned the Nexus line as this, uh, as this flagship class that needs to sell millions and millions of units to be considered a success even though it will sell uh, quite a bit, and I think it'll probably sell more than any other units. But, I mean, there's a lot of competition out there, and not least of which is, is from Android, and I, you know, it's, I don't know, I, it, because you don't need to sell so many Nexus devices, what needs to be, you know, why, do, why does it need to, to compete? <laughs> effectively? You know, I mean, you have, you have all these phones out there that are selling for uh, less on contract, um, not off contract, certainly, but nobody in the U.S. buys phones off contract. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know about that anymore. <coughs> T-Mobile's on a yeah, big, yeah. big, big rise. Yeah, huge just, rise. Yeah, and they don't do contracts. Right now, this is like the big break for T-Mobile. I mean, if T-Mobile would set it upon themselves to buy all the Nexus Fives for themselves and have this be <laughs> like their flagship phone, you can't have them. So you, you know, just feel like I have a I have a pretty good pulse on the your finger on the pulse of what normal people are talking about, because I have a lot of friends who are luddites and who are not in our business, <laughs> and they often ask me things. Uh, about, they're about, not really your friends, Michael. About <laughs> cellular telephony, and uh, you know what? You know what? They ask me about a lot of stuff. And you know what? Not a single one of them has ever asked me about ever. What's T-Mobile doing these days? They be they, none, none of the people in the Northeast, in my experience, know that T-Mobile exists. Um, so I don't know. I, I, maybe, they may not I ask you because you hate T-Mobile. What's that? Really? <laughs> yeah, they know you hate it, and I they know not. you're not going to say not. anything nice. And you if you can't it? say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Yeah. No, no, I like, I like, I like what they're doing. But so I don't know. You know, the the T-Mobile destiny is not tied to the Nexus Five destiny. I mean, this thing is gonna is gonna do some interesting stuff. I don't know. There's so much out there. As Joe Levi is fond of saying, there's so much out there on the market. It's such a great time to be alive because there is so much out there. Um, the Nexus 5 will stand out thanks to its Google backing, but I don't necessarily see it um, lighting the world on fire outside of the circles of people who really appreciate it. No, 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 it's not supposed to. It's That's what I absolutely said. not That's supposed what I said to. To kick, the whole thing, to kick the whole thing off. So I, I yeah. think what I was trying to say before was that I don't know if I can answer you because I don't understand the purpose of the question. Because when you have a product that doesn't need to succeed, what the hell is the point? <laughs> the, the point is the success is measured by uh, showcasing the latest version of Android and doing so at a price for the, in this case, the top-of-the-line hardware that is almost half the price of what everybody else is selling their top-of-the-line hardware for. They're showing that it can be done, and they're showing that you eventually you're going to, to have to keep your prices low to be able to do this. And if you look at the strategy, it's working. Google, yeah, Google is, is taking over the world. Hardware. But who else can do this? Who else can yeah. be like Google with a Samsung problem, could. Like, like it has Motorola. its own content Why library. Why would it want to? No, yeah, no, no, no. And Microsoft. Google can lose money on this. And, and Microsoft, yeah, has shown that for three years they've been burning money on Windows Phone because they can. But, like, how long, how long are you going to do this? And what does it ultimately matter? Yes, you're showcasing Android. Yes, you're, you're, you're driving prices down in your own ecosystem. But I don't know if that's going to, if that is going to create a competitive impulse in everyone else to be like, oh, God, we, Samsung, we've got to lower our price in the Galaxy S4 from 749 to I'll give you a couple of examples. That doesn't make any sense. I'll give you a couple of examples. Do we all remember when you all remember when the first iPhone was launched, Michael? You actually made the line to buy the phone. No, the 3G I bought. Yeah. You, you, you made the line for the 3G. Okay, so 
when the first iPhone was launched, obviously it was five hundred dollars on contract. But back then, you had you had to, for if you wanted to get a BlackBerry Pearl or a Razor, I think those phones were between three hundred and three hundred and fifty dollars on contract. There were some crazy pricings back in two thousand seven for you to get phones on contract. And then the following year, after all the success of the first iPhone, Apple comes out of the blue and says, this is the new iPhone 3G, and now it's going to be $200 on contract. And that, ever since that launch of the iPhone 3G, the, the market price for high-end smartphones has been $200. $200 on contract. $200 on contract. And it's remained that way. Um, so we could say that that was an example of a disruptive, you know, a great phone that was so disruptive that it made everybody drop their price. The same thing happened with the first Nexus 7. You know, we had a market of $500 tablets, and when when they least expected, you know, Amazon tried to do it with the Kindle, but it wasn't strong enough. So comes out Google with their Nexus 7, and everybody's like, okay, $200 is the price for the small tablets. Let's do that, and everybody's doing that. I think you're downplaying the Kindle's effect on that. I think Amazon really had a big impact when the Kindle Fire came out. I mean, that was a, that was a big deal. It wasn't a very good product, but it was it was a big deal. Uh, and I don't, but I don't think ta tablets are analogous to smartphones in this sense. I mean, your iPhone example is a very good one. The difference is the iPhone was a groundbreaking shift in how smartphones operated. The Nexus 5 is not that. Good point. It's iterative improvement. Good point. Good point. Now, now that that being said, I feel that sure. I mean, it's not okay. it, it's not disruptive enough when it comes to technology. I just feel that the phone is so future proof that you know the the only problem that I see right now, and this is probably my perspective, is the the distribution of this phone. If this phone were available on every carrier today, and if this phone were available on Best Buy. Uh, target and just about every store today and Google really focused on distributing this phone hard kind of how they did with the Nexus 7 at least on certain retailers then I would feel that this phone would be disruptive enough to drop the price of the market I feel that the problem is the distribution um, ne Nexus 5 headed to Sprint, T-Mobile, Amazon, Best Buy and Radio Shack in the coming days uh, that's oh. from Todd Hasselton of Techno Buffalo oh, I, I reject the reality and to <laughs> substitute <Wow>. my own. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> sorry, I, I, I just saw that. As okay, you I want to take Michael in the wayback machine just for a minute. Yeah, oh, I love that machine. <laughs> Michael, do you, do you remember way back when there were rumors about Google coming out with a Google phone? We're mm. talking pre G one. Yeah. And Google denied it. We are not making a Google phone. There's not going to be a Google phone. Blah 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 blah. Mm. Uh, way before. And then people started thinking, wait a minute, Google does everything for free. Everything they offer is free. So if Google comes out with a phone, it's going to be for free. And sure. people were thinking free cell phone, free service, free hardware, free everything, which we all know wasn't true, right? But yeah. everybody was kind of getting stoked about what if it's free? What if it's free? Fast forward to today, we have something where you said they're losing money. We're still paying for it, but not as much as we could be or could otherwise have been. So are we getting to the point now where we're starting to realize the fact that Google is making enough money off of us and selling our information to other people that they're really not losing the money on the devices. They're making a whole boatload of money on the, well, we're the product that's being sold, not yeah, the phone. No, yeah, no, so I, do you I, think I, that's I, where we are now? Have we finally realized that uh, free phone mentality that we had originally? Yeah, we would be if, if, if the Nexus line was what was driving Android sales, but it's not. You know, it, what's, what's driving Android is, is skinned to hell Samsung devices that do not resemble anything like the, the, the Nexus but, line. But we go, back, to be changing. we go back to the distribution topic, Michael. Why is the Galaxy S such a popular phone in my country? It is simply because I've already seen four people on the street with a Galaxy Note 3. I was I pulled it out of the box and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to be like the first guy here with a Note 3. This is going to be freaking awesome. And I just go to the mall <laughs> to go look for a case, a Note 2 case for this phone. And I walk into the store and they're like, oh, you got it. Did you buy it at the other store? Because we already have it. And then I see three guys there sitting down buying them. And they're uh, like, and we've already got the cases. We've, that's so, such a sad okay, moment. And, and I've only seen one HTC One. 
ever since April that it launched. So for me, it's a distribution issue. The Galaxy is popular simply because it's the ubiquitous smartphone that's available everywhere. It's not, it's not availability. Marketing, I mean, it's, marketing, it's marketing, 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 marketing. Yeah, marketing. Obviously, obviously marketing, marketing and availability. Fine. Let's let's yeah. join those two things together. Sure. Well, you're ninety ten. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let, let's join <laughs> those two things together. But, you know, go, going back to the topic, I do feel that if what Joe just said, uh, sorry, Taylor just said, we just lost Joe. Goodbye, um, Joe. Okay, <laughs> so nice if the carriers, if go war driving to do hangouts. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if, if this phone yeah, is going to be available on these carriers, yeah. and think about it, if Sprint would do the bold thing of offering this phone free on contract... It would be bold. That would be very bold. They've got deeper contract. pockets now that they're owned by SoftBank, so I mean, that's that would be a really interesting move on their part. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. This would be the first Google phone, literally, that would actually... It, it has the capability and the pricing from Google to be a free on-contract phone. Yeah. That would, be, um, that would be amazing. I mean, it, that sounds a lot more like something T-Mobile would do, but that would be cool if Sprint took the opportunity to usurp them to just but beat them to the... You it's know. not going to help them, though. Sprint but T-Mobile doesn't has... have contracts. They can't do that. Yeah. No, no, no. And, and I'm, I'm, not, so I'm not necessarily bad. saying that this would be big on Sprint. I'm saying that if AT and T and and Verizon and the rest of the carriers would pull this phone free on contract, now that would be disruptive. What I want to know is what T Mobile is going to sell this thing for, as uh, you know, like in in uh, terms yeah. of installments. Because if they're selling it at the Google price, so three hundred and fifty or four hundred dollars, on your your installments are going to be like. Fifteen dollars a month. I really <laughs> think that's unlikely, though. I, I mean, mean no. I mean, last year with the Nexus Four, they sold it for what five hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, they, they whatever five fifty up over the the base price. Yeah, but that was a that was a different that was a different T-Mobile. Remember that. It was. So I mean, it, it, that that's that's compelling. If you can get a phone and finance it for ten or fifteen dollars a month, no contract, unlimited I LTE. Applications, a great camera, LTE. I mean, why not? It, it's it, T-Mobile, it, and, it, and it will sell in very respectable numbers. It will never sell. It will never take over the the driving force of Android unless it's marketed as well as there are two Joes in the ribbon. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> unless it's marketed as well as, uh, as branding. Like, I need to say before I give up the floor. I, there are three things that are happening. One, we're all having a great time talking. Two, we all need to be writing something. And three, I yes. really have to pee. So we, we should go soon, yeah? Same here. This was supposed <laughs> yes. to be a 30 minute thing, guys. Sorry. Um, I, I guess the, the conversation just got so carried out. Uh, regardless, we've got some opposing thoughts. Uh, some people love this phone. I do. Uh, some people are not really surprised by this phone, like Michael, uh, which is great. <laughs> that, that's, that's the way the market behaves. Um, I guess the biggest takeaway is that if Google would figure out a way to get the carriers involved with this phone and sell it and give this phone free on contract or for $350 off contract. This could be, again, you can buy an iPhone 5S, 16 gigs, for $650 unlocked, and then it's, it's $200 on contract. So there is no reason why a free on contract would not work for this phone if carriers would jump on board. Prepaid. Or even $149. Ooh, or right. We're carriers. making some big assumptions about what Google would charge the carriers, though. And I don't yeah. think it's selling the phone at a loss to begin with. I just think it's not making any profit. If it's going to sell to the carriers and get them involved, I think it's going to want to profit off this. Well, yeah. $350 is already not profiting, but we'll see. We'll see. Can I, guess, can I jump I guess... in with some bracing, breaking news here, Jaime? Uh, sure. uh, KitKat, no. uh, according to HTC USA's Twitter account, uh, customers who love candy, LOL, uh, KitKat is coming to the HTC One in the U.S. in 90 days. Ow. 90 Ow. days. Ow. 90 Ow. days. Having been blink beat it up, guys. So having been briefed rather yeah. thoroughly about the upgrade process that uh, manufacturers, yeah. the, the dance that goes so through. If you're, you're using that. a Galaxy phone, expect it by the end of next year. Shoot. Whatever <laughs> happened to the, the Android partner program or whatever it was called? Yeah, uh, that didn't it's terrible. Really. it's terrible. But let's wrap this up, gentlemen, because Michael is not the only person that needs to go to the bathroom right now. Final no. thoughts, Mr. Martin? I have a lot to write. Are you buying? <laughs> I will buy probably eventually. Um, not right now. I'm probably I'm I'm enjoying the Note 3 still. So not immediately, but I will eventually buy it. I bought two. Nexus 4s and two Galaxy Nexuses and a Nexus S and two Nexus 1s. 
So the odds are I'll probably buy one or two eventually. <laughs> it's not if, but when. You've got to buy two so they're not lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Joe Levi, final thoughts. Are you, You're definitely buying. You already uh, mine is yeah. Mine's already bought. It was in the first batch. It's yeah. It should be here soon. It's the 32 gig quite for all who want to know. But ironically, I already have that Spigen uh, Ultra Fit case, which is black. <laughs> all right. All right, Mr. Michael Fisher, you have my Galaxy Nexus, my friend. So I after do. you. After you're done with your review of the Nexus 5, and since you don't like the phone, I'm sure you're going to put it in a box and ship it to Honduras. <laughs> that chance. Okay, so you, you already have a phone ordered because you're going to review it, but yeah. final thoughts? Not the happy? Review, the review unit will come in. No, listen, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say that I'm not happy. I'm. I am excited to see what the hell this thing is all about and uh, to get inside it and 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 use it. Uh, would I buy it personally? Probably not. I mean, everything that it does, uh, my Moto X essentially already does, except uh, for the whole pictures thing, which are crappy, on this. Yeah. But uh, I'm, no, I'm I'm very much looking forward to getting inside of it. I'm sure that 1,500 commenters are already uh, preparing their <laughs> their rebuttals to uh, any negative thing I have to say about anything about it. But no, rest assured, I am maintaining an open mind, and I'm actually really, really jazzed for it to show up at my door. And um, there was something else I was going to say, but I forgot. Oh, yeah, the Moto X is going to get Kit Kat as well uh, soon, according to Motorola. I am going to tell you something, Michael, that uh, I will require a ransom on the five for your app three. So something happened to either my or your <laughs> internet. Know, internet. It's Taylor. I didn't understand anything. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor, oh. you, you were suddenly like Daft Punk. I don't know what you were saying. <laughs> it's awesome, but I said that uh, the Nexus 5 is the ransom for your iPad 3. Oh, uh, you know, you, you can go ahead and keep that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stephen, final thoughts. I, I'm really curious as to you, Stephen, because you're not like the, oh, I'm crazy to get the newest, latest phone. Yeah, I, I'm on the fence about this. In fact, while we were talking here, I, I muted my mic. I went back over to check if they were in stock. I almost ordered one. I'm on the fence, though. I love the hardware. It's just I'm not completely sold on Android 4.4 and this ever-encroaching everything's Google+. Plus. I... I got to try it out first on my Nexus 4, I think, before I commit to a new phone that's going to be 4.4 from the start. But I'm give really tempted. Give it to the plus. No. <laughs> Something went wrong there. No, but nobody knows what you're saying, Taylor. Get a different internet connection. Yeah. All I heard was a fart. 